Marshall here, and the top three of men, today I'm going to be showing off my Pokemon collection. While I may not have the most impressive Pokemon collection out there, a lot of you have asked about the items that I use in my videos. So today, I'm going to satisfy your curiosity and show off all the rare, weird, and unique Pokemon items I have in my possession. When you're collecting Pokemon games, patience is key. Right now, Pokemon games are super inflated because everyone is getting back into it again. While this is great because it means we have more people to share Pokemon with, it also means competition is steeper when it comes to snagging up Pokemon items. What's interesting about Pokemon games compared to other popular game series, though, is that just about everyone who liked it as a kid traded in their old copies at some point. So while these games might be kind of expensive compared to other Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games right now, they're also extremely common as they were all bestsellers. This is good because there's so many copies floating around that you're bound to find one at a decent price eventually. Pokemon games are even more common in Japan than they are in the rest of the world. And unlike English language copies, you're more likely to find cheap, complete in box copies of Japanese games. In Japan, box Pokemon games go for about 50 yen each, or about half a US dollar. Don't let a US reseller dupe you into thinking that these are rare or valuable. Be smart about your shopping and you can have a decent Pokemon game collection in no time. There are only two actually rare Pokemon games. Pokemon Card GB2, the Japan only sequel to Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy, sells complete in box for about 8,900 yen in Japan, or about 100 US dollars. On eBay, the same game tends to go for about 200 to 500 dollars complete in box, and almost 100 dollars out of the box. It's doubled in price in the past year thanks to people's increased awareness of this game. The second rare Pokemon game is Pokemon Box Ruby and Sapphire. This game was sold only on PokemonCenter.com and at the Pokemon Center in New York and America, and cost $50 when it was brand new. Since the game was basically only the Professor Oak's Lab feature from Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, no one wanted to pay that much money for it, and thus the NTSC version of the game became extremely rare. The Japanese and European versions of the game were sold in regular retail stores, but many online sellers were taking advantage of people's ignorance and marking their games up to match the cost of the American copies of the game. About a year ago, a Japanese copy of the game cost $13 on eBay or Amazon. Now they cost up to $100 or more. European copies are selling for $40 or $50 complete in box, and of course the American copies are through the roof. I got my copy of the PAL version, with the manual, for $18. Pokemon games in my collection that aren't video games, like these Pokemon board games. I already reviewed Pokemon Master Trainer, but these two I may never get a chance to talk about. The first is the Pokemon memory game I found at a thrift store. This is your basic matching game. You just flip over the coins and try to match them before your opponent. The second game is this Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Pokeball flip game. I'd explain how this works, but I honestly can't figure it out. There's a timer, a Pokeball paddle, and all these cards. The instructions are two pages long and they still don't really help. From what I gather, it plays similarly to the war card game, but with gravity and a timer thrown in. I don't get it. Pokemon has more toys than almost any franchise in history, except maybe My Little Pony. Hasbro handed out the Pokemon license to so many different companies that even they lost track of how many Pokemon toys were being sold at the time, making it difficult for collectors to catalog all the Pokemon items available. Some people pick a specific Pokemon or even a specific type to collect toys and merchandise of, but I usually snatch up anything Pokemon related I can find. I've been collecting since I was 6 years old, and many of the items were the originals I got when I was a kid. the rarest toy in my collection is this boxed Ash and Pikachu figure from 2006. It was released for Pokemon's 10th anniversary and was available only on PokemonCenter.com. I was just getting into series collecting then and I saved up the money I earned from pet sitting to buy it. 
There are only 1,500 made, and though there's no indication of which number mine is, I'm proud to own one. People always ask me about all of my Pokemon plushes, so here's a good look at the whole game. I actually only own a couple of rare plushes. One of the rarest items in my whole collection is this Franco & Sons Mew Bath Buddy. There were a ton of these bath buddies of a whole bunch of different characters, like Pikachu, Psyduck, Clefairy, and so on. Apparently though, late in the lifespan of this line, Mew and Mewtwo bath buddies were released in limited numbers, making them pretty sought after by Mew and Mewtwo collectors. The Mew one has been known to climb into the $500 range, but the Mewtwo one often sells for thousands of dollars. I got my Mew new at Toys R Us as a kid for probably around $10. Not knowing it was rare, I cut off all of its tags and played pretty rough with it. Luckily, it's still in mostly good shape. The second rare plush in my collection is this little Heracross. Apparently Hasbro got really lazy with distributing second generation plushes, and almost all the Hasbro plushes from 2000 are rare. Mine is special to me because it was a gift from Justin on the day I met him. Pokemon VHS tapes are common, and pretty much worthless. Stop by any video store's going out of business sale or any thrift store and you'll find tons of them for a dollar or less. Even Japanese VHS tapes tend to sell for under $20 online. DVDs usually range from $7 to $10 and can be found basically anywhere DVDs are sold. Pokemon books are fun to collect because there's so many of them in varying quality and type. Guidebooks, activity books, sticker books, you name it. This activity book came with temporary tattoos and I never used up most of them. This page has always made me laugh. What is Heracross doing to that poor Bulbasaur? Pokemon Jr. was a series of books designed to teach kids how to read, and this book in particular was responsible for making me literate. The only rare Pokemon book I own is this volume of Electric Tail Pikachu. For some odd reason, though most volumes are fairly cheap and easy to come by, this volume in particular runs for some pretty steep prices online. I've heard that it's because one page features a pregnant Jessie from Team Rocket, which is highly valuable to rocket shippers. Some communities of Pokemon collectors focus entirely on collecting Pokemon music CDs. I only own two, but I've always been a big fan of the music in the series, both in English and Japanese, so maybe someday I'll expand this collection more. One of my favorite Pokemon music-related items, and one of my favorite Pokemon items period, is this Pikachu and Caterpie music box that came from the Pokemon Center in 1999. It was a gift from Justin and it means a lot to me. Apparently this music box in particular is rare. Why? because it's really hard to find one with Caterpie's antenna still intact. The song it plays is Oyasumi Boku no Pikachu, from the Japanese version of the anime. Pokemon clothing has always been fun to collect, because it's the easiest way to let people know you love it. I've worn most of these shirts in videos in the past. Do you recognize them? I actually don't wear many of these in public, simply because I like to let people get to know me before they find out I'm a Pokemania. The Pokemon trading card game has always been a huge part of the franchise, and as such, there are thousands and thousands of cards to collect. While the majority of Pokemon cards aren't valuable, and I certainly don't own any that are, there are a few favorites I can show you. Thank <laughs> you. 
brother had a lot of convenient jobs when Pokemon was new. He worked at a Burger King, so Justin had an entire box of these brand new, complete in box, solid gold Pokemon cards just sitting in his kitchen for a while. He also worked in a movie theater when the first movie came out, so he had a ton of wrapped ancient Mew cards. Miscellaneous Pokemon items are fascinating, because it's fun to see just how many different kinds of items they could cram under the Pokemon umbrella. A lot of the ones I happen to have are school supplies. This folder was the one I used in school when I was in first grade, which is why it's in such terrible shape. I keep Pokemon magazine clippings in it. Well, that about wraps up the show and tell. Thank you for watching, and if you want to stay updated on my Pokemon collection and see when I have new items, you can visit my website, skinnyusecovet.webs.com. There's a link in the video description for easy access. I'm Tomashi, and stick around for more Pokemon videos. See ya!